Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today, I'm clearly not unboxing anything. Today, I'm going to take the opportunity to help try and explain some of the advantages and disadvantages of amplification upgrades. Harping back and I guess stepping from a previous video on uh, amplification upgrades when your integrated amplifier gets supported with an additional power amplifier. Now, clearly that can only be done when the manufacturers have invested in uh, the same amplification uh, that's in the integrated amplifier and an additional power amplifier, because it allows you to run the power amplifier to the bottom of the speaker and the integrated amplifier to do the lighter load associated with the top of the speaker. And the pre-amplification work is done within the integrated amp. That's really, really common. And of course, with people who have uh, existing speakers and an existing integrated amp that are looking for a relatively cost-effective upgrade, adding a power amplifier and modifying their speaker cabling is one of the most cost-effective ways of upgrading. Today, we're exploring that next uh, option, that next level, which would see you utilising a preamp and a power amp. Now, this is a streaming preamp from NAD pretty good, but we're going to ignore the feature set of it being a streamer and concentrate uh, solely on its pre-amplification role and uh, conceptually looking at it as the, uh, the master associated with the two power amplifiers uh, driving the speakers. Now, we're going to start with a very simple configuration which would see the pre-out of this going straight into the pre-in of the amplifier and because we just focusing on one channel. We've got a traditional 2 to 2 configuration from the amplifier into the speakers. Now that's a very traditional pre-power combination. Obviously the other channel's off to the other speaker. Uh, now if you are wanting to add another power amplifier, we're going to have to look very seriously at the configuration of the preamp initially. Um, the first thing you might have to do is explore the option of one of the accessories associated with being able to split the output. This hard Y adapter would take one of the outputs and immediately double it into two. Or there are cabled versions of these types of things, enabling it to go one to two for a, a, an interconnect, or the opposite associated with whatever feature set you might like. Some preamps have particularly common at the very high end, we'll see a duplicate of the pre-out. In this model, it's got a single set of RCA pre-outs and then a single set of subwoofer outputs. The balanced and single-ended outputs often uh, can confuse things slightly. Balanced is typically running a little hotter or a little bit higher voltage, and it can, can create a little bit of a uh, imbalance. However, because the pre, sorry, the integrated amplifier has the ability to change the level, we could probably utilise the RCA outputs to perhaps the base and the balanced outputs to the one driving the tops, but that's more detail than perhaps I'm wanting to go into in this particular video. So, again, recapping, this is a very traditional setup, a single set of line outputs into a single set of line ins with what we've considered to be one output into the speaker. So, removing the preamp for a moment uh, and just concentrating on the additional power amplifier, we're going to talk about some of these options. Now the first option would see a bridging mono. Now that is where uh, either you own a large mono block amplifier already and you've dialed it up to the speaker. Okay. Or you've, like this one, uh, owned a stereo power amplifier with the ability to change its configuration from a stereo power amp into a mono. Luckily enough, this has this capability, and, and to be honest, um, it's 80 watts a channel in stereo. It's 300 watts a channel bridged mono. So there's a significant improvement in current and voltage to the speaker and control of that load if you move from an 80 watt to a 300 watt sort of configuration. Now very commonly, and I'll sort of pause, very commonly when you bridge a traditional amplifier into mono, you run the risk of letting that total harmonic distortion sort of ramp up and get a little bit out of control. 
It's not uncommon for you to end up with four times the total harmonic distortion when you bridge something mono. Uh, electrically, you can end up with four times the wattage as well, up to, you know, conceptually. Um, but it's that total harmonic distortion, that veiling, that, that, that hiss at the top that we want to try and avoid. Now, luckily enough, these NADs don't do that. Uh, it's related to their digital hybrid design. But conceptually, we've got to understand that bridging mono isn't necessarily the best way of doing things. Again, it can end up with a veiling effect because the total harmonic distortion increases with the uh, wattage of the amplifier. Nevertheless, should you choose to bridge mono, you would select both ampli amplifiers into their mono mode. You would take from the preamp the left channel and go into the, let's, we've got it line, sorry, line out, line in for left bridged, and then right, uh, left in for right bridged. And then you would change the connections. So you've still got a 2 to 2 configuration, but you will see, and, and again, hang around with, uh, hang around for all of the photographs that I'll take. We'll take some close-ups of every single configuration that I've mentioned. But you might be able to see clearly on the amplifier that's slightly higher up that these two terminals become the outputs when you are bridging an amplifier mono. And it's not uncommon to need to do that, sort of swap things around. Sometimes, unfortunately, it does mean using two positives or two negatives, and you have to be very, very careful with phase for that reason. Nevertheless, bridging mono in this configuration is going to deliver a 300 watt power amplifier to a single speaker. The advantage of that can only be found if either the speaker itself is relatively inefficient, or you are wanting to deliver significant volumes. And of course the speakers themselves have to be capable of utilising that. Otherwise you will run the risk of inadvertently kind of, um, well, opening yourself up to a potential issue as far as a failure within that speaker. So that nevertheless this is the bridge mono configuration where the two identical amplif amplifiers would be flicked into mono mode, the inputs utilised and then the output speaker cable rewired. The next way of doing things sees a change of speaker cable. Now the advantage of the Wireworld Solstice is that it, it is a 4 to 4 natively in its configuration. So you can simply just change the plugs on the end and end up with a, um, a 2 to 4 configuration or a 4 to 4 which is what would be required if you're going to investigate any of the uh, upgrades associated with both vertical and horizontal by amping. The very first thing you want to do before you even consider uh, doing anything is removing the bridging clips. Electrically, connecting things without, with those bridging clips still in place will cause a failure, a catastrophic failure often. Nevertheless, because we are now talking about a configuration in a stereo amplifier, we're going to make sure that any configurations that were set associated with bridging mono get flicked back. Now in this configuration where the amplifiers are stereo, you get the option of using uh, one amplifier to drive the top of the speaker and one amplifier to drive the bottom. Now that's a horizontal bi-amp. A vertical bi-amp configuration would see one amplifier drive uh, one speaker and one amplifier drive the other. Nevertheless, let's look at the wiring associated with a bi a horizontal by amp which sees very carefully the termination of the cable changing and the cabling very very carefully utilized to ensure that there's no uh, ability for an electrical issue. Uh, the wire world cable, this solstice, actually has a little white fleck on a set of its conductors, ensuring that you can probably see, and again hang around for the photographs, a set of cables associated with the um, top amplifier to the top of the speakers, and then a set of um, terminations and cables associated with the second amplifier into the bottom of the speaker. Now in this configuration, it removes the chances of total harmonic distortion getting out of control. But instead of dealing with nearly 300 watts uh, to each speaker for a bridge mono, we're now dealing with an 80 plus 80 or 160 watts. It does deliver a, 
uh, a little bit more current electrically, but ultimately this configuration is going to have zero effect on total harmonic distortion. We haven't bridged anything through it itself, so you end up with exactly the same total harmonic distortion, but a doubling of the wattage. Now at a modest volume, it means that effectively that total harmonic distortion is reduced, because you traditionally will listen to uh, music at a certain low volume and get emotional with the volume control during some of these commanding uh, pieces. So being able to effectively turn the volume down to, give, to, to deliver into the room the same volume gives you a huge advantage as far as the uh, sonic characteristics, the unveiling associated with dropping total harmonic distortion. And most people, the feedback improves uh, both soundstage and the mid-range as well. Again, this 4 to 4 configuration of cabling is required for this option. And it means, of course, the outputs from the preamp need to be duplicated into the inputs of the power amplifier. And again, those wire adapters and things like that may be required. So this is an example, as I said, of horizontal by amping. Okay, now, vertical. Oh, hang on. Now, horizontal by amping sees the top amplifier potentially driving a relatively light load. The mid-range and highs in a speaker is relatively electrically light as far as its uh, uh, current and voltage requirements, whereas the bass is often a very heavy load. So you end up with one power amplifier inadvertently doing a lot more of the, the work to keep things under control. This configuration can work really well if you've got an integrated amplifier and a power amplifier because the integrated is also having to do the job of the pre-amplification. But in this configuration, clearly electrically, the top amplifier's got a little bit of an easy ride. It's solved with vertical bi-wiring, bi-amping and bi-wiring. So vertical bi-wiring sees a sharing of the load. Again, you must, to do this, have a 4 to 4 wiring configuration and you must remove the bridging clips. Nevertheless, this would see the output of the preamp completely duplicated and the left split into the two inputs of the power amplifier and the right split into the two inputs of the second power amplifier. You will see a much more even load is then presented to each power amplifier, where you've got a doubling effect of the wattage, 80 plus 80, a measurable harmonic distortion, all of the advantages there, but it sees a sharing of the load. And that's our recommendation typically when you've got two stereo power amplifiers that can't be bridged mono, and they are identical and with a preamp involved. An integrated amplifier, we see the alternates. In this configuration, that's our recommendation typically when we are wanting to share the load and ensure that two amplifiers are running essentially the same control of the speaker. The advantage again is quite clear. A lowering of total harmonic distortion, an increasing amount of current and control. Again, uh, in this configuration, 180 watts. Sorry, 160 instead of a... 80 watts. And this 4 to 4 configuration is also nice and easy from a speaker wiring perspective and perhaps a little less fussy. You can, click, you can clearly see that one, one amplifier will be associated with one speaker and the other amplifier can be associated with the other. So we've got some advantages there. Now let's reintroduce this preamp because I do want to sort of show you, um, you do end up with a few boxes when this type of thing um, gets introduced. The output is split and becomes perhaps in this instance the sorry, input of the left speaker. The right output, sorry, right output, there we go. Uh, the right output gets split and goes into the um, input and output, uh, sorry, the inputs associated with the uh, second amplifier. Nevertheless, this configuration with two amplifiers and a preamp shares the load with the speakers, yet gives you all of the total harmonic distortion and wattage advantages associated with some of the nirvanic setups that you can possibly do. Nevertheless, in the end, all of this becomes relatively cost effective because you may have uh, invested in an integrated amplifier and then a power amp, again, previous video, um, or have a preamp and a power amp 
and then want to add an additional one. So there we have it. All of those options explained. Bridging mono, vertical biamping, and horizontal biamping. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it helps. Here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.